be making bases. Hey, what's going on? It's EverJ Music. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about several recording tips that you can use to get better mixes in your beats um, in Logic Pro 10. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. The first tip that I'm going to share with you is to make sure that with your mix, um, all of the files are audio files. Okay, so um, it's okay if you have maybe one or two tracks that are MIDI files, but you want to make sure the, the bulk of your session is going to be an audio file. Now, the reason why you want to do that is just to make sure that, uh, like for instance, your computer processes um, audio way better than it processes MIDI. And then when you throw in a bunch of effects on top of that, it can, you know, slow down your computer. So in order to get a better mix, one of the things you could do is make sure that you export all your MIDI files or export your session as audio files. Brand new to Logic Pro 10 or, you know, if you need a refresher, basically what you would do is go over here to file and then go to export. And then you're going to go to all tracks as audio files. When you do that, <clears throat> you would just bounce it down to somewhere on your computer. I usually put it on the desktop or put it on a hard drive. And from there, you're going to select wave file 24 bit. So save the file format as wave and the bit depth is 24. And then I just do the normalization or normalize as overload protection only. I would recommend going ahead and creating a new folder. You can name it like whatever the track's name or the whatever the beat name is and then say stems. And it also wouldn't hurt to put the BPM if you know it, you know what I'm saying? So I forgot what the BPM is, but let's say it's 120. You would create that folder and then you would basically go ahead and export the files. After you export the files as audio, then the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and is create a new session and it'll be something like this. I'm not going to I'm not going to create one, but um, do an audio track here and then you would basically come over here to file and import either one audio file at a time, but the easiest way is to go to the folder and just drag everything in. All right, so that's the first tip. Make sure everything is bounced down as audio uh, or, or exported as audio, okay? Um, along with that tip is before you even bounce it down as audio, make sure whatever instrument sounds that you're using are the, the best high quality instruments that you can use, okay? So for instance, um, this guitar right here, We kind of sampled that as you know, you know, as you've been following this course and everything like that. But let's say that the sound if it just didn't sound good, if it sounded basic, like some of the stock sounds, don't get me wrong, they're good out, out the box, but some sometimes it's better to go ahead and upgrade to, you know, one of these better VSTs or sound banks like Omnisphere and then replace your instruments if you're using MIDI, you feel me? Um, the reason why is because like more professional sounding sounds, there's not going to be a whole lot you're going to have to do to them during the mix. Same thing with your drums. If you have drum sounds or whatever, like this is what I got going on here. If you listen to that snare, that snare is a little weak. So I'm going to literally have to come in here and doctor, doctor, that, doctor that snare up a little bit just to make it sound good. So the better thing to do instead of going with it, if it's just like one or two instruments, don't worry about it. But the better thing to do is just go ahead and switch out the instrument for a better sounding instrument or a more professional sounding instrument. All right, so that's tip number two. Another tip I'm, I'm gonna go over, and go over is um, you wanna make sure that you group your instruments together. OK, and what I'm what I mean by that is this, like if you have your anything that's like a drums or percussion, you want to group that together and, and into one uh, one track. And how you do that is actually by highlighting all the tracks and see where you see output. You go to where it says stereo and then go to bus. And what we're going to be doing is singing, sending this signal to its own auxiliary track. OK. 
and um, you so you just select whatever open bus that's there and it's gonna automatically create this new auxiliary track okay and so we would name that drums we also do the same thing for your melodies sometimes you might have you know a bunch of different melody maybe three different basses three different you know pianos and three different you know guitars or whatever you can also group those together as well but grouping is a very good tip when it comes to mixing so this would be a melody when it comes to grouping the reason why this is going to be a good technique is again going to the whole aspect of not overloading your computer um, when it comes to it trying to process the audio so for instance say on the drums if you know you're going to be using you know a, uh, a compressor say that it's pretty much going to be like a lot of the same settings for the most part and instead of putting it on each one of the, uh, the instruments here instead you could put it on your actual auxiliary channel and what will happen is it will still process the audio the way you're wanting it to but instead of having like five or ten different compressors you only have one so it's basically going to help with a smoother mix because it's not going to be using your computer's not going to be using as much uh, processing power in order to do that another thing it's going to do is also give you more flexibility so instead of actually coming in here and having to like say bring the level up or down on each individual track if you want to bring the drums down or up you can just come over here and bring it up or down that way another cool thing is when it comes to actually uh, maybe even EQing you know what I'm saying if you know like for instance on all of these um, guitar tracks if I know I'm gonna be doing a lot of subtractive EQing cutting around the same frequencies so instead of putting all the EQs on each of these I can just put it just on this auxiliary channel so there's a lot of cool things you can do with that okay all right another tip would be to um, also use sins so <laughs> these are your sins and it's basically another way of routing um, signal okay so people use sins a lot of times for effects that you know that you're gonna put on a lot of different tracks so one effect that usually people use the sins for is gonna be um, like your reverb so for instance what I could do here is as you can see right here this is your sins I can come over here and actually I can just create it with using one track I go to my sins and go to bus and basically select an open bus and it's going to create a um, another auxiliary channel so what we could do is we could just name that reverb put a reverb on here and now instead of having to put this same reverb on all of the different tracks right I can just go over here and add a send to one of these tracks and we're going to send this reverb signal over here to whatever track you have the send on and so all I had to do is just adjust the reverb here and then I can just push the volume up or down here and it just helps out with the mix um, you could do other things too it doesn't have to be reverse you could do this with compressors you could either do it with EQ although obviously I wouldn't recommend it necessarily but you know that's another tip is to use sins okay sending your audio or effects over via an, an auxiliary track okay and the last thing I would talk about here well I'm, I'm gonna give you two more tips one is when it comes to EQing is to use what's called subtractive EQing compared to additive EQing so for instance um, on this 808 instead of coming in here and boosting some of these frequencies like come over here and boosting this like this what we'll do instead is we'll come to some of these other instruments that have lower sounding frequencies that would be competing with this frequency and cut those frequencies so that this frequency on this lower sounding instrument can shine through vice versa say if you have a higher sounding uh, or, or, or an instrument that has a higher frequency you might want to cut some of the other higher frequencies of the other instruments so that it, it shines through 
So like an example of this would be is a, on this guitar track, right? Um, this is the 808 up here. And let me just play the guitar. Visually, you can see here, right? This is the bulk of where the 808 is on the frequency range chart. So anywhere between 30 hertz and 100 hertz is the main bulk of it. It goes all the way up to around 500 hertz. Over here, though, you can see that the main bulk of the uh, guitar is from like 300 hertz all the way to 4K. Okay, and so what you would do is, as you can see, there is still a little bit. It's not as much uh, low end as it is over here. But what will happen is this low end right here will compete with the low end over here. So what you could do to get around that is this take away the low end right here that coordinates with the low end here. Vice versa, say if it was competing, I don't think it's going to, but you could take away the highs that are right here, some of the highs right here, and it leaves some room for some of the highs right there to operate. So that's another tip you want to keep in mind. And then the last tip I'm going to um, tell you about before we go to the next lecture where we're actually going to do this live is to not over process your tracks. OK, and when I say over process, I mean, don't overload your like, say, for instance, you have a kick drum here and you're just adding and adding and adding onto that one kick drum to do certain things to make it perfect. You don't want to do that. You want to see if there's any way you could like less is more. Maybe less is more should be the actual tip rather than, you know, don't over process, but less is more. Um, that's when it comes to reverb. That's when it comes to adding comp compression, um, delays, any of those type of other, anything outside of EQ, I would say less is more. You know what I mean? Try to see if you could do, you know, mix the track without having to add a lot of those different other elements like compression and, and, and reverb first. And then from there, then you can start adding disparately so that it's not overwhelming the mix. Uh, I found that like when you start adding too much to the mix, you know, it just really just creates more problems than solutions, if that makes sense. All right. But anyway, those are pretty much the tips that I wanted to give to you um, a few bonus tips that I will say is that you know when you are mixing it would help that like you know whatever um, interface that you're using just turn it down all the way down and then just turn it up just a little bit so you can actually barely hear it and then it, that will that will actually help when it comes to leveling so getting the right levels on your tracks a lot of times if you blast your music sometimes you're missing out on certain things that are maybe tucked away too much in the mix or a little too loud. And so when you bring the overall volume down in the mix, right, and what you have is uh, you're able to hear more what's going on. So basically that's another tip there. And another tip um, which you should know these things, but sometimes, you know, it's good to refresh is to use, um, to use another track to A, B, excuse me, your mixes, okay? It's called a reference track, basically. And basically what you would do is you would find a track that sounds similar, a professionally mixed and mastered track or song that sounds similar to the beat that you are mixing and mastering. Okay. And then what you could do is you could drag it in here if you want. And then you can push mute. Let's say this is a track right here. This is 808. You push mute. And then go to mixing it, and then once you want an A B, you can unmute it and push solo, and then listen to the professionally mixed track, and just kind of get a gauge of okay, where is the kick? How loud is that kick drum? How loud is this snare? Um, where are they panning these different instruments? Is this in the middle or is this in the left? And if you listen to it very critically, uh, at a certain point, you can actually even hear the EQing on it. You can hear the reverb on it. You could hear, you know, what they put on certain instruments and different things of that nature. And so that is a, another tip right there. So uh, that's going to wrap it up, man. I, I didn't want to go too too heavy into the tips before we actually get into the mixing. But just give, leaving y'all with those several tips, I, feel, I, I guarantee you if you just follow those tips and keep those in mind, you'll have a pretty dope mix. 
in the next lecture what I'm going to do is um, actually mix this track live and just using some of the tips that I told you show you how we can get like you know pretty solid mixes on your beats